today we will see about the group contact method. So, after completion of this unit, you will be in a position to learn about various group contact methods along with the strong and weak points. You will be able to understand about the basic principles of method demonstration, gain knowledge about the difference between observation plots, result demonstration and method demonstration, gain knowledge on conducting general meetings and field days. So, here oh, for all purpose we cannot go in for individual contact method. When we want to have a group approach, then we can go for group contact method. A group may be defined as an aggre aggregate of small number of people in reciprocal communication and interaction around some common interest. In this method, the extension worker communicates with the people in groups and not as individual persons. The size of a small group may be from 15 to 25. A median group may be from 25 to 50 and a large group may be from 50 to 100. Group contact methods are usually well suited for bringing about, bringing about specific information about practices, helping to move the individual to, through the desire for conviction and sometimes to take action. Examples are method demonstration, group discussion. Now we will see the strong points of group contact methods. It enables face to face contact with large number of people at a time, facilitates sharing of knowledge and experience and thereby strengthen learning. Meetings are adaptable to almost all lines of subject matter, satisfy basic urge of people for social contact. It is less expensive than individual contacts due to save of saving of time, more effective in stimulating action than mass contact. Group influence facilitates individuals to accept changes. The weak points of group contact methods are wide diversity in interest of audience creates a difficult learning situation. Holding meetings may become real objective. Pitfall of working with caste groups or groups with vested interest should be avoided. So one of the method that falls under group contact method is method demonstration. So what do you mean by method demonstration? It is a relatively short time demonstration given before a group to show how to carry out an entirely new practice or an old practice in a better way. It is not concerned with proving the worth of a practice, but how to do something. Example, see treatment with fertilizers. It is definitely not an experiment of, tri of trial, but a teaching effort. In contrast to the result demonstration conducted by the farmer under the supervision of the extension worker to prove that the recommended practices will work locally. The method demonstration is given by the extension worker himself or a trained leader for the purpose of teaching a skill to a group. The role of a skilled technician, the extension worker or leader shows the step by step procedure in the operation, explaining each, each listen to the oral explanation and ask questions during or at the close of demonstration to clear up points about which there is uncertainty where practicality as many members of the group as possible repeat the demonstration in the presence of the others. This helps to fix the process in the minds of the audience and increases confidence in the ability to master the technique. The method demonstration is the oldest form of teaching. So long before language was developed, men taught their children how to hunt, how to cultivate etc. through method demonstration. It is given by the extension worker himself before a group of farmers or people for the purpose of teaching a skill to, to them by showing the step by step procedure involved in an operation or process. The objectives of method demonstrations. It enables the people to acquire new skills, to enable people to improve upon their old skills, to save time, labor and annoyances and to increase satisfaction of learners, to give confidence to the people that a particular recommended practice is a practicable proposition in their own situation. Now let us see the procedure or steps to be followed in a method demonstration. Number 1. Analyze the situation and determine the need. So determine that the subject matter practice involves skills which need to be demonstrated to many people. Is the demonstration for new skills developed through research or for old skills not being performed successfully? Is it suitable for visual presentation to a group? Can the demonstration be repeated satisfactorily by local leaders? Is the practice really important from the farmer's point of view? Can people afford to follow the practice? Or supplies and equipment available in sufficient quantities to permit widespread use of the practice? 
Number second step is plan the demonstration in detail. Gather all the information about the practice. Familiarize yourself with the subject matter. Check on research findings. Talk over the problem with a few village leaders. Let the villagers help you plan the demonstration. Let them provide land and other requisites. Have a timetable depending on how much skill is required and how soon it, it is to be required. acquired. Have a job breakdown or a demonstration outline giving the operations in logical steps. Identify the key points to be emphasized under each step. List out and select demonstration materials and equipment most likely be likely to be available or readily obtainable. Arrange for diagrams, directions and other teaching materials to be distributed. Prepare kits of special material needed by local leaders if they are to repeat the demonstrations. Make sure that the workplace is properly arranged, that is lighting in terms of lighting orders, no distracting noises. Third step is rehearse the demonstration. Practice demonstration until you are thorough with all the steps and know exactly what should you say or do at each step so that the operation can be performed in manner to inspire confidence. Make sure steps and points will be clear from audience point of view. Check time required to make sure there is opportunity for audience questions and other expected participation. Fourth step is give the demonstration. Prior publicity should have been given about the place be at the spot early to check up equipment and material. Make physical arrangements so that all participants can have good look at the demonstration and take part in the discussion. Explain purpose and how it is applicable to local problem. Find out what they already know about the practice. Show each operation slowly, step by step, repeat wherever necessary. Use simple words to explain each step of the operation. Make sure the audience can see and hear clearly. Emphasize key points and tell why they are important. Solicit questions at each step before going on to the next step. Give opportunity to learners to practice a skill that is very important in method demonstration. Distribute supplemental teaching material pertaining to the demonstration. Summarize steps covered in the de demonstration. Get the names of participants who propose to adopt the practice. This helps for follow up. If demonstration is given before local leaders who will repeat it, emphasize teaching points we made, explain comments of demonstrate, demonstration kit. Coming to the last step, follow up, give publicity on the demonstration through press, radio meetings, etc. Arrange for reports on the number of and attendance of demonstrations given by local leaders. Make a sample check to assess the extent of use of the skill and satisfaction derived by those attending the method demonstration. So unlike other methods, there are advantages and disadvantages in method demonstrations also. And coming to the advantages, number one is peculiarly suited to teaching skills to many people. Number two, seeing, hearing, discussing and participating in a group stimulates interest in action. The costly trial and error procedure is eliminated. Acquirement of skills is speeded. Builds confidence of extension worker in himself and also confidence of the people in the extension teacher if the demonstration is performed skillfully. Simple demonstration readily lend themselves to repeated use by local leaders. Introduces changes of practice at low cost. Provides publicity material. The limitations of method demonstrations are suitable only for practices involving skills. So the extension worker should uh, see that the practice is teaching involves skill. If, the, they, if there is no component of skill, then the method demonstration cannot be used. Number two, needs good deal of preparation, equipment and skill on the part of the extension worker. Number three, may require considerable equipment to transport to the workplace. Number four, requires certain amount of showmanship not possessed by some extension workers. Now let us see the basic principles of demonstration. Participation is very, very one of the most um, important basic principle. Where possible, demonstrate, demonstration should be carried out on local farms with farmers' participation. The participation part is very important in any demonstration. The more the local farmers can be involved in the whole process of a demonstration, the greater will be the self-confidence and readiness to learn. Second principle or basis is simplicity. Clear-cut demonstrations of a single practice or new idea 
will be far more effective than ambitious and over complex demonstrations. Learning. A demonstration is a type of classroom and the agent must be conscious of classroom requirements in terms of space, time, equipment and the teaching method to use. Why should we go in for demonstration when compared to other methods? So, we have to remember certain basis for demonstration. Number one is most people retain 10 to 15 percent of what they read if the subject is explained in clear and simple language or in particular technical terms. A majority of them remember about 20 to 25 percent of what they hear. The, the concentration is not limited through listening with to a speaker who, perf who perhaps fatigues them with tedious lecture. About 30 to 35 percent of what they have seen is kept in kept in mind if what is offered is well arranged and selected. The majority remember 50 percent and more of what they have seen and heard at the same time provided both presentation complement each other. About 90 percent of what is taught is kept in mind by majority of the people if they participate actively and if all the senses are involved. Only the demonstration can make teaching perfect. Now let us see the comparison of observation plot, result demonstration and method demonstration. Coming to purpose and observation plot, try, when you try to, when you try a new practice recommended by researchers, research workers with a view to observe the value or worthiness of a practice, um, uh, observation plot can be used. The purpose of result demonstration is to, sh to show locally the recommended practice and the purpose of method demonstration is to show how to do a job or how to do something or skill part is involved. In case of um, observation plot, it is conducted by farmer, cooperator under close supervision of extension worker. Under the result demonstration, the farmer demonstration, farmer is the demonstrator under the guidance of extension worker. Under the method demonstration, the extension worker himself or local leader persuade for the purpose. The benefit, coming to the benefit, under uh, observation plot, the extension worker to decide the suitability or otherwise of a new practice to a given locality. Result demonstration, the demonstrator as well as other farmers benefit out of result demonstration. The result demonstration. Persons present at the demonstration benefit under method demonstration. Observation plot is essential, replications are also necessary. And the result demonstration comparison not necessary. And the method demonstration also comparison between two technologies not necessary. Then maintenance of record is absolutely necessary under observation plot and result demonstration where it is not necessary under method demonstration. The time required is substantially substantial period under observation plot and result demonstration and it is relatively less, less under method demonstration. The cost factor, it is costly under observation plot and result demonstration and relatively cheap under method demonstration. The interrelationship precedes result demonstration. Usually for the result demonstration is followed by observation plot may involve one or one method demonstration. The method demonstration often pays the way for result demonstration. Next method of which falls under group contact method is general meeting. The term general meeting includes all kinds of meeting uh, held by extension workers. There is a large variety of meetings. They vary from size to size. It is, uh, it is um, melas or festivals are attended by thousands of people. Such uh, meetings are also called as general meetings. Geographically, the meeting may be held in a neighborhood or a community or village or a block. The meetings may be held at a hall or a home, field or shandy and so on. They may be held periodically or sporadically. Special topics of meetings often take the name of the meeting. Example, program planning meeting, evaluation meeting, annual meeting, farmers day meeting, meetings at result method demonstration. What are the essential elements of meetings? It is obvious that elements which make for successful meeting will vary greatly with the kind of meeting being actually carried out. They are detailed below. Determine the place of the meeting in the teaching plan. Is it felt desirable to reach many people quickly? B. Is group action required 
with, will the group approach contribute to learning? Will it serve to focus attention on the problem and provide material for news articles, radio talks, circular letters, etc. as additional means of teaching? Number 2. Define the specific purpose of the meeting and the segment of the extension client to be to, clientele to be reached. Is it to determine or disseminate the subject matter in information, to develop interest in a new subject, to change attitude towards a problem or to deepen understanding of public relations or to determine program or plan of action or to develop leadership and local responsibilities, to provide an opportunity for social contact, to evaluate the progress made a, under a project or a scheme. Plan in advance for meeting. Decide number of meetings, places and tentative dates. If the time and place are to be selected, it is important to select the time, season of the year, day of week and time of day in terms of the work cycles of those persons expected to attend and select the place in terms of its accessibility to the majority of the persons who are to attend. After selecting the tentative dates, check to see that there are no important competing events that will affect attendance. Select meeting place which will provide suitable lighting, seating arrangements, ventilation and other necessary facilities. Encourage participation of local leaders in arranging and conducting the program. Agree upon the part each will play and appro approximate time each will take. Outline a tentative program or agenda. As far as practicable, hold daytime meetings to reduce number of night meetings. Secure speakers or resource persons as needed. Inform speaker regarding local conditions and suggest subject, subject matter be adopted to needs of local audience. Select the audio visual aids best suited for the occasion. Provide for social and recreational features. Fourth point, conduct the meeting. Start the meeting on time. Chairman should open meeting promptly. State the purpose and program of the meeting in, in an old, old, orderly manner. The procedure, of course, depending on the kind of meeting. Make introduction brief. Focus attention on central theme. Keep meeting moving on schedule. Use appropriate audiovisual materials. Watch reaction of the audience. Encourage audience participation when desirable. At appropriate time, take action on matters calling for decision. Take advantage of group psychology and employ appeals that arouse interest, create desire and stimulate action. Close meeting on time with brief summary by chairman. Give recognition to individuals and groups that have, a, that have actively participated. Hand out relevant folders or pamphlets at the time of break-off. Take names of those interested in further information or follow-up. And the last stage is follow up the meeting. In this, you have to evaluate the meeting to see if we can make any improvements in meetings to be arranged in future. Utilize what happened in meetings in news articles, radio broadcasts, etc. Make farm and home visits and or send additional information to person requesting for it. Make sample check to determine satisfaction with meeting and the extent to which the information is being used. So what are the advantages of meetings? It reaches a large number of people, adapted to practically all lines of subject matter, recognizes ba basic urge of individuals for social contact, group psychology stimulates conviction to act, promotes personal acquaintance between extension work and village people, supplements many other extension methods, has great news possibilities and publicity value, influence change in practice at low cost. So many and the meeting many people are benefited be, since it's a group approach. And coming to limitations of the meeting, number one is suitable meeting place and facilities may not always be available. Number two, wide diversity in character and interest of audience may create a difficult teaching situation because the needs of the audience is very different. So it is difficult to gather the audience with the same need. Number three, may require undue amount of night work on the part of the extension worker. Number four, circumstances beyond the control of the workers such as conflicting attractions, unfavorable weather, etc. may result in poor attendance. Meetings which are poorly arranged or conducted may have far-reaching unfavorable effects. The holding of meeting may become the real objective rather than the purpose of the meeting was intended to advance. Another uh, method which falls in the group contact method is field days. 
So, in general, the extension worker conducts various demonstrations and at times when it is more convincing, the extension worker organizes field days so that it can be shown to many of the farmers for convincing and motivate the farmers to adopt the recommended practices. So, field day is a method of motivating the people to adopt a new practice by showing what has actually been achieved by applying the practice under field conditions. A field day may be held in a research farm or in a farmer's field or home. If the number of participants is large, they should be divided into small groups of about 20 to 25 persons each who shall, who shall visit the spots in rotation. The objectives of field days are number one, to convince the participants about the applicable, applicability of the practice in their own situation. Number two, to motivate them to adopt the practices by showing its performance and profit, profitability under field conditions. Number three, to remove doubts, superstitions and unfavorable attitude about the new practice. To reinforce previous learning about the practice. And the technique followed in the field day is first planning and preparation. So, decide about the practice, location, date, time and the participants. Involve media persons. Number two, contact subject matter specialists and ensure their participation. Number three, make festoons and colorful labels for display. Number four, arrange a place of meeting close to the site where the practice has been applied. Number five, make arrangements for display of exhibits including diagrams, charts, etc. near the place of meeting. Collect relevant publications and prepare a special handout for the occasion. Inform participant work, participants, workers and media person in time. Make arrangements for registrations of the participa participants. Arrange for public address system, vehicles and other facilities. Make written program and divide the responsibility to suitable persons. Come into the implementation part of field days. Assemble the participants and welcome them on arrival. Give a short introduction about the purpose of field day and how the group shall move. Where the field day is to be held in the farmer's field, the demonstrating farmer shall play his role aided by the scientist and if it is at the research station, the scientist has to explain. On completion of the visit, make the specialist and participants seated at the meeting place. Distribute publication to the participants. After a brief formality of addresses, emphasize again on the important points of the practice. Invite few visitors to give the reactions. Answer to the questions raised. End the meeting by, by thanking the participants and those who have helped. Distribute sample packets relating to the practice if, if any. And the follow up. Maintain contact with the participants. Reinforce learning through mass media. The limitations of field days are it cannot be held frequently. Does not facilitate in-depth lesson. And we can conclude by going through this, this, through this lesson, we can understand that group contact methods are usually well suited for bringing specific information about practices, helping to move the individuals through the desire for conviction and sometimes leading to action. Method demonstration is a relatively short time demonstration given before a group to show how to carry out a, an entirely new practice or a old practice in a better way. There is we came to know that there is difference between observation plot, result demonstration and method demonstration and we have gained knowledge about on conducting general meetings and field days.